Sashko Kedev, uh, interventional cardiologist from Skopje, Macedonia. And I'm really delighted with this opportunity to share with you some of the insights regarding of uh, recent advances in carotid stenting, particularly with the latest generation of dual layer mal, uh, micro mesh stent road saver. Landmark historical trials of carotid stenting versus carotid endarterectomy have shown that uh, carotid stenting is associated with more minor strokes and endarterectomy with more myocardial infarctions on a short-term basis. There was no difference in heart endpoints, major stroke and death. Long-term follow-up of 10 years demonstrated no difference in outcome between carotid stenting and endarterectomy. And the latest European Society of Cardiology guidelines recommend carotid stenting in patients at high risk for surgery. In recent years, number of uh, carotid stenting procedures are steadily increasing. And the short and long term outcomes of carotid stenting have improved significantly. While carotid stenting indeed provides a minimally invasive alternative to endarterectomy, eliminating the need for a general anesthesia and possibility of cranial nerve injury, peri and early post procedural distal embolization events deserve further attention. Newer devices that are currently available are part of a double layer micro mesh stents. Currently, we have uh, two devices on the market. It's a road saver from Terumo and a Seaguard from Inspire MD. In some experience centers, routine proximal protection has been introduced with uh, very good results. There have been several integrated embolic protection devices which became available recently. And finally, a direct carotid access with a flow reversal was uh, introduced in a limited centers of excellence. The Road Saver DLMS uh, was specifically designed to provide sustained uh, peri and post procedural embolic protection. It's very important for a PCR community that uh, nowadays more and more carotid stenting is performed by interventional cardiologists and radial access is becoming particularly attractive among interventional cardiologists and based on our coronary experience we know it's associated with a significantly lower bleeding and vascular complications and less aortic manipulations Growing experience in acute stroke management with mechanical thrombectomy, whereas approximately one fourth of patients have a concomitant carotid stenosis, require carotid stenting expertise. And finally, recently released S3 guidelines from Germany mandates even more stringent acceptable risk criteria for carotid stenting of 2% of acceptable risk of stroke and death in uh, asymptomatic patients and 4% risk of death and stroke rate in symptomatic patients. The road saver is a double layer micro mesh stent uh, with its inner micro mesh layer that has been designed specifically to provide sustained embolic protection during and after carotid stenting. And its performance has been already validated in several small and mid-sized studies. It's a five French uh, flexible device with a very good navigability and crossability, which makes it particularly attractive for radial procedure, even with a slender five French guiding sheet strategy. The Road Saver study is a prospective single arm multi-center observational study, which is the largest contemporary European carotid stenting study with 2000 patients enrolled in 57 centers across 13 European countries between January 2018 and February this year, aiming to further confirm safety and efficacy of the road server DLMS in the elective treatment of broader patient population with carotid disease, reflecting the real-world pan-European practice of carotid stenting. 
The primary clinical outcome of uh, this trial is the major adverse event. It means uh, cumulative incidence of any death or stroke at 30 days post procedure. And the secondary outcomes include the technical success, procedural success, stroke related death, major stroke, minor stroke, TIA, TLR, major, ma major uh, vascular and bleeding complications. What is also very important, the study also predefines several sub-analyses, including those are focused on access site, embolic protection device in use, clinical status between asymptomatic and symptomatic patients at presentation, uh, operator specialty, which is very important. And for us, it's particularly important uh, a predefined, independently reviewed diffusion weight MRI sub-analysis. A uh, dedicated 12-month uh, follow-up will evaluate the long-term stent performance and other relevant safety parameters. Moreover, the data collected through a pre-specified sub-analysis will provide a deeper understanding of the road saver, DLMS performance, and carotid stenting in general. I can share the, the present 30-day uh, interim analysis of the road saver study in uh, 561 patients with uh, symptomatic carotid disease, which is 48%, and uh, 614 asymptomatic patients with uh, carotid disease. Male patients uh, constitute approximately two-thirds of the population, and symptomatic patients were a bit younger, two years younger than asymptomatic patients. The use of embolic protection is similar in both uh, patient groups. Mainly, distal filter were used in uh, predominantly in the whole study. While femoral access is still preferred, it's notable that more than one fourth of patients in both groups were treated via a radial approach. And generally, unequal patient selection preference across European countries and medical specialties has been observed. And now we are coming to the most uh, important data presentation. So the primary endpoint of the 30-day cumulative incidence of all death or stroke is noted in 2.7% of symptomatic patients and 1.5% of asymptomatic patients with stroke-related death in 1.3% and major ipsilateral ischemic stroke in 1.6% in symptomatic patients. These results compare very well to the recently released S3 guidelines from Germany, setting an acceptable risk criteria for carotid stenting of 2% for symptomatic patients, asymptomatic patients, and 4% of death and stroke rate in symptomatic patients treated with uh, carotid stenting. So overall, the study confirms the safety of carotid stenting with a road saver DLMS in a large contemporary pan-European patient cohort, one of the largest uh, real-world carotid stenting databases so far. Although it's a single arm, the results have the potential to impact future carotid stenting guideline adaptation. And finally, uh, the last and final 30-day primary endpoint results of all symptomatic and asymptomatic patients will be available for presentation later this year on one of the forthcoming meetings. I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention.